right, good morning, Dallas Spurs. Welcome. Can't wait to see you guys next year. Let's stand and praise and worship our Lord and Savior this morning. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. In the presence of my enemy. 
you unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy to all my fears are gone I'm no longer Child of God, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen.
against every weapon that's formed The thief in his plans will pass over When he sees the red on the door And I plead the blood
God, we thank you for your mercy, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, praise you, praise you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Church, this is the part of the service where we bring our needs to the Lord, where we cry out to God over the needs that we brought here today. And it is very fitting that it happens after this song where we proclaim that we plead the blood of Jesus over our problems. Some of you guys are here today. You've got, you've got, you have needs. You have needs you need God to answer. Anybody here this morning? Here's what we're gonna do. There's hands that are raised in the back. There are, there are, we're gonna pray for, we're gonna pray for you to have your hands raised. In fact, guys, look around behind. Some people get around them. We're gonna pray over, we're gonna pray over our nation. We're going to pray that, that God moves the United States in 2024, right? We're, 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 clo we're closing out this year. We know that God has plans. We know that God is moving no matter what, what we see on the external, that God is still moving. We're going to pray that God does wonders with our people. Let's pray that, that we as a nation remember our God again. How many of you guys agree we need to do that? 100%. So let's cry out to the Lord. So Lord God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that, that you love your people, God. We thank you that you love your people. God, I pray for the hands that were raised. I pray for every need that was brought into this building. God, I pray for those that are going to have health, heart catheterizations done. More than one person told me today that they have a schedule this week. So, Lord, I pray right now that you would give a good report, that you'd bring about healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray that heart functions would be made right. I pray that arteries would, be, would open up. God, I pray that, that hearts would be, made, would be healed in Jesus' name. God, you are still our healer. We believe in this. God, I, I pray right now for, for George's mom who is in hospice care right now. God, I pray that your presence will be very vivid in that room. Not just real, but vivid. God, I pray there would be no denying that you were there and that you love her so much. I pray that you would, that you would, that, that you would give her rest and give her peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray right now for this nation. I pray that you would move in this land. God, I pray that we as a people would not forget who you are. I pray that you would awaken this country, that you would awaken us from the bottom up. And Lord, I'm not speaking about a political move. I'm speaking about a cultural move, God, where we as your people, our eyes are open again and we are drawn back to you, God. We, I pray that we as a people would lift you high once again. God, I pray you'd have mercy on this nation. I pray that you would guide our leaders. I pray that you would open their eyes. If they're doing things to harm us, I pray that you would convict them and make them do what is right in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray one last thing before we do communion. I pray for those of us that have loved ones that are far from you. I pray that 2024 will be the year that they come home. I pray that 2024 will be the year that their eyes are open, will be the year that they repent, will be the year that they run straight towards you in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for that. Lord, I, I shouldn't have said one last thing but you because you keep putting things in my head. Lord, I pray for those in our church right now, God, who are who are struggling with either underemployment or a lack of employment. God, I pray in the name of your son, Jesus, that you would show favor on them. I pray that you would open doors. I pray that, that they, would be, they would be wanted. God, I pray that, they would, that you would lift up their spirits, that you would increase their morale. I pray that you would bless their finances. I pray that you would, that you would open doors that seem to be closed. God, I pray that rejection would cease in the name of Jesus. I pray for a move of your spirit, God. We love you, God. We praise your name. 
So we're going to take communion right now. And as we, so you have a moment to grab your cups if you, if you, if they're in the back if you haven't yet. As I was, as we were worshiping, I was thinking about something that I observed this week. I spent, we spent the week, uh, me and the girls. I was the only, the only man in the group. My boys stayed home and worked, but I, I got to go to Tennessee with my wife and three daughters. And I noticed something with my two younger daughters that. Every time they wanted to drink, they wouldn't grab their cup. They would run up to Lisa and grab her cup. Nothing is sacred. Now, personally, I think that's disgusting. But my wife has come from a different cloth. I think she thinks it's cute. But, but, but they're always drinking out of her straw. She's always drinking out of her glass. And, and I'm observing this, and, and her cup is their cup, and their cup is her cup. There's this, why are they doing this? Because they're family. Right? Why do my daughters feel comfortable drinking out of Lisa's cup every time it's available? Because they're family. Because they're close. Jesus offered his cup to us. Right? He, 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 he beckons us. He, he sets the table for us because we are his kids. He offers us his cup to drink from his cup. Because, because we are together with him. Right? He says that, that, that we need to abide in him. Church, we are one body. We are one body. We are siblings, and we drink of the Master's cup. So today, we're going to drink from the Master's cup as we take communion. But before we do that, let's take a moment to reflect. And if there's thing, if there's sin in your life, if there are things that the Holy Spirit is convicting of you right now, take the, take a moment and repent of them. Give them to the Lord. Give it up to Him, so that we can approach His throne clean because of what He did. Let's take that moment. In the book of Mark, it says, As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat it. This is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink. I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Here she offers us this. So today, it's embarrassing. Because I respect this, I'm not going to eat this from the ground. Because of what this represents, I open another one. This represents the body that was broken for us. It was broken for you. It was broken on your behalf. Let's take it and let's eat it with thanks. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for the, the fruit of the vine. I thank you for what this represents, God, that your blood was, was poured out for our sins. I thank you that, that because of this, we, we are a community. Because of this, we are forgiven. Because of this, we are your kids. Today, we drink from your cup. Thank you, Lord. God, I pray that you would move in this house. God, church, cry out to him. As we go into the last part of worship, Lord God, I pray that we would just pursue you today. I pray that you would speak into this place, that you would move here, God, in Jesus' name.
Verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's exalt his name together. Praise the Lord. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. 
I thank you for the messenger that you have sent that we can hear the word of God. I pray that you would anoint her. I pray that Linnea would be lifted up. God, I pray that every word that you have planted deep in her soul would come forward. God, I thank you for the anointing you placed upon her. Let her proclaim the word unto us today. I'm looking forward to it, God. I thank you, Father, as she comes forward. Let her be anointed and anointed and anointed. God, the anointing you put on her has never left, Lord, but let her feel the fire of God that's within her and let it come forward. I'm looking forward to everything since I've heard that she's going to be speaking. I'm ready to hear what you have planted in her, God, and let it come forth and let us grow in your spirit today, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Good morning. Oh, y'all are seated, so that worked. I don't have to say that. Um, Okay, so yeah, I'm not Pastor Rob. Um, I hope the hair is kind of a giveaway, but I do have something to share. So thank you, Travis, for praying. I'm going to pray again real quick, and then we're just going to jump in. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity. I pray that I would decrease and that you would increase, that there would be more of you in the service, that people would remember you. They wouldn't remember me or anything else that happened today, God, but that you would be here and that you would meet people. In Jesus' name, amen. So today is New Year's Eve. And I feel like that brings um, a lot of different types of people. You have your people who are setting all of the goals. You know, they're going to lose 30 pounds, drop Netflix, and start eating keto by March. Um, and then by March, they're also kind of done by then. Um, then you also have your people who are kind of like, I don't want to say like Scrooge in the Christmas movies, but they kind of remind me of him because they don't need a calendar to tell them what to do and they don't need a New Year's date to tell them what goals to set and they're going to bed at 8 p.m. tonight and all of that. Um, but then you have a third camp of people and I like to call them the saps um, and that's me because New Year's is both an ending and a beginning. Um, I love it. I love the chance to look back over this past year and see all the things that God has done for me. Seeing in January, I mean, last year, by the time it was January, we had almost died in a snowstorm. So <laughs> being alive right now already is so awesome. And then seeing what God has done from January to here and today is totally different. This is not where I thought I would be. This is not anything that I thought in my plans what my life would be like. And I'm so glad. Like God is so good. He has taken such good care of us. Um, so I love that aspect. And I also love beginnings because I am a planner. I love to plan. That is my idea of fun. And so New Year's is great because I have a whole year I get to plan out. And I get to figure out, like, what trips are we going on, if we can go on any trips. Um, Nathaniel and I are moving next week, so I get to plan moving. Um, we're in Dallas. Don't worry. But we get to plan all of that. We get to figure out, like, what our goals are, what our financial goals are, all of that kind of things. Oftentimes, New Year's, when people kind of evaluate their job situation, do I like where I'm at? Do I like where this is going? All of that kind of stuff. Um, and so this whole thing reminds me of a conversation we were having in Young Adults one time. One of our friends was faced with a really big decision, and it was, I would argue, life-changing. Um, and we were talking about it, and he was asking, how do I know what decision is God's will? Like, how do I know what next thing is what I'm supposed to do? And so we were talking about it, and I was just remembering while I was preparing, I was like, that conversation is what I have with myself every year around New Year's. Like, how do I know what God wants for me? How do I make decisions that align with his will? So that is the question we are going to ask and kind of answer. Um, I don't have any answers, but the Bible does. So we're going to go to Romans 12, 2. It says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Um, so we can go home now. I think that kind of summed it up. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand on it a little bit. And at the end, I do have some practical takeaways of how to do that, but we're going to talk about what that means first. The first step to making decisions that align with God's will is to not conform to the pattern of this world, which sounds easy, but I really want you to think about it. Like, what are the patterns that the world is in right now? 
There's patterns of fear. There's patterns of anxiety. There's patterns of all kinds of evil and violence right now. So you have those, the big bads. But also, like, how do you do your finances? Are you greedy and selfish and scared? Or are you generous and are you giving? And do you trust God with that? How do you raise your children? How do you do all of these things? Like, there's so many different ways that we can catch ourselves following the pattern of this world. Do you gossip? The world loves gossip, but the Bible tells us to be unified and to be together. What are you going to do? You know, you kind of have a choice there. So that's the first thing, is to really see, like, you know, am I fitting in? Because if you're fitting in, there's probably an issue there. You know, if you fit in with everybody else and you match up, that's really not what we want to be. Um, let's see. And the next part of that is getting to know God. If you want to know what he thinks or what his will for your life is, how to make decisions, you have to know him. Um, Jace is my best friend, and she'll be here at 1130. And I know Jace so well to know that she probably hates these pants. Um, anything that I love, she probably can't stand because we are polar opposites. And I know that because I spend time with her. And we hang out all the time. And I watch her wear so much pink all the time. And it's great because it's Jace. Um, and it's the same thing with our relationship with God. You have to get to know him to be able to do that. We're going to talk about um, like a journey today. I'm going to use paths and walking as a metaphor a lot. So the next Bible verse is Psalms 119.105. And it says, Your word is a light unto my feet and a light to my path. If you want to know what God thinks, if you want to know what his will is, a good place to start is his word. We're blessed. Our God is not silent. He doesn't leave us alone. He's not, you know, some distant, creepy thing. He's God, and he's good, and he gave us his word. There's a whole Bible that tells what he thinks. You learn all about Jesus. We have the Gospels. You can literally, there's an account of Jesus' life. You could see how he did things, what he did, what he didn't like, what he did like. We have that. So, if you're on the journey to figure out what God's will is, his word will light the way. He doesn't leave you alone. You're not on your own trying to make these decisions. God is with you, and he's good, and he has a plan for you. And when we talk about renewing your mind, that sounds kind of meta to me. I was like, what does that actually mean? Um, and Google had, like, so many different definitions for it. Um, the first one is that as a verb, it means to replace something broken with something new or to resume something that has stopped, like your Netflix subscription. You have to renew that every month, things like that. Um, but for our minds, it looks like changing the way that we think and being refreshed. Um, I have researched sleep a lot the past couple years, and something really cool about sleep in the brain is that in certain parts of your sleep cycle, this fluid like washes over your brain, and it literally refreshes and renews and restores your brain. Your mind literally is renewed every night when you go to sleep. And that's kind of the same thing that God wants us to do with his word. Um, yeah, it looks, looks like changing the way that you think, and you can do that. The more you put in the word of God, the more that you study it, the more time that you spend with him, just like when we're sleeping, when that fluid's washing over, it's the same thing. Like, God can wash over your brain. He can change the way that you think. Pastor Rob says it all the time, like, God can change neural pathways, and God can change the way that you see things. You have to let him, though. You have to ask him, too. Renewing our mind looks like giving, ooh, looks like letting the Holy Spirit catch us in toxic and unhealthy behaviors, patterns, or thought processes, and asking him to catch you and let you know. Like we say conviction, um, it's kind of that, and just remembering, like, I probably shouldn't talk like that, probably shouldn't have said that, probably shouldn't cut people off in traffic or drive in the slow lane, or drive in the fast lane when I'm going really slow. Like, you know, you can ask God to help you see things like that. Um, Brandon Heath had this old song that was called Give Me Your Eyes, and it was all about asking God to help him see the world the way that he saw it. That's part of renewing your mind, because the more you start to do that, the more your mind becomes more like God's, you're going to see things totally different. When you start to make decisions, it's going to be totally different. Like, you know, five years ago, Linnea would not want to be working at a church. I wanted to have a business and be CEO, and now I know, like, this is what God wanted for me. I'm so happy. I would not be fulfilled or happy in that job. Maybe on later, but not right now. Um, so it's really cool. You get to see things the way that God does. Um, renewing of our mind really happens when our thoughts go from what do I need to do or what do I think or where should I go and change to God, what do you want me to do? Where do you think I should go? 
who do you think I should be? How should I respond in a way to this that glorifies you? And you take the focus off of yourself and you start focusing on God. Um, and how do we practically do that? We are going to go to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 to do that. So Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Um, these are going to be my takeaways. Before I um, got to this, actually back in 2020, I think, I had rededicated my life to the Lord, and I was praying, and I was driving down the road where those cows are down that way. Um, there's like a little bridge. Um, I was driving over there, and I was praying. I was like, God, you said to renew my mind. You said you want me to be different. You want me to follow you. How do I do that? Like, what does that look like? I'm a planner. I'm a list person. What does that look like for my life? And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, the verse that I've been hearing since I was itty-bitty popped into my mind. And I was like, whoa, that's right. So we're going to talk about it. The first step is to trust in the Lord with all your heart. And this is so much easier said than done. Um, I feel like that's something you're never fully going to arrive at. Um, I know I haven't. It takes a lot of time. But you can start. You can start trusting God. Trust also kind of goes with total surrender. Like, I can't have my plans and do exactly what I'm going to do and trust that God is going to do something else if I'm not willing to let go of what I have. I need to get to the point where I say, God, this is what I have. This is what I believe you've called me to do. But if you have something different or this is not what you want me to do, I'm willing to let it go. That's what total surrender looks like. And it's trusting that he is good. Our God is not going to lead you somewhere that he's not going to be with you. I'm not, life doesn't get easy. It's not, it's life. Um, but God is always with us. He's not going to lead you into something where he's not there. God will always be with you. So when you're making decisions, is this something God would actually call me to do? Or is this not? Does this match up with his Bible, his word? Does this match up with the things that he has told me? Does this align with God's word in my life? Because if not, that might be a good little, hey, this might not be the right decision to make if it doesn't match up to all of those. Uh, trusting in God looks like praying and even fasting before you make certain decisions and really following his word. Um, if you believe that God is good and you trust him and you do what he says, even if it doesn't feel good at first, you have to know that he is going to take care of you. He always does. Um, it also can look like asking God like before you do something. And Pastor Rob has a super cool sermon series about hearing the voice of God and understanding when God is speaking to you. Um, God doesn't want you to like, I mean, he might, but I'm pretty sure he doesn't want you to hold up the line at the restaurant being like, Lord, which meal should I have today? I don't know. That's not what we're talking about. Um, and again, Pastor Rob has a great series that kind of tackles all of that. But for the sake of this, it's like we're moving. Um, we took a whole day, and I know that's probably a little bit of time, but that's what we had because it happened really fast. Um, we took a whole day, and we were like, God, do we do this? Do we not do this? What do you want for us? And it was just, yeah, this works. So was, okay, cool. And we have to move. And it was like 15 days from the time we like found the house to when we moved. So that was super cool and a lot. Um, the next thing kind of goes with that is lean not on your own understanding. If I le leaned on my understanding, I would have been planning a move for like four months. But, you know, it didn't work. My favorite way to illustrate this um, first is that it goes hand in hand with trust. Um, it's hard to lean on someone else's understanding if you don't trust them. So that's why I really think that the trust came first, because you have to trust God, and then you can lean on his understanding. Um, Proverbs 14.12, this isn't on the slides, so don't worry, Dustin. Um, it says, there's a way that seems right to man, but it leads to death. So things can make sense to us, but that doesn't mean they're right. And my favorite way to illustrate this is on Facebook, where they have those math posts, where it's like three parentheses times whatever, whatever, squared, divided by four, in parentheses, minus something. And you do the math, and you have your logic, and you did PEMDAS, and all that stuff, and it all makes sense, and your answer is four. And then you open the comments, and there's a couple people that have four, but most people are like two or five or negative three, and they all have their own different ways of doing it. And if you do the math their way, their answer checks out. Um, so everything makes sense to each other, but at the end, everybody's wrong because they're wasting time fighting on Facebook about numbers instead of living their real life. Um, <laughs> it's true. A real life example that I have of that is that right when I graduated high school, it would have made sense for me to go to college. I applied, I got in, I started enrolling, um, but that's right around the time where I was really like 
okay, God, I'm about to make some really crazy decisions with my life, and I don't want to do this on my own. Do you even want me to do this right now? And I just, I just knew, like, he did not want me to go to school right then. But that was so weird because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to graduate high school. You're supposed to go to college. You're supposed to go be a big CEO in Texas. That's what I thought I was supposed to do. But when I really gave it to God, I just knew, like, this isn't what he wants for me. It made no sense to me. I did not understand it. But, like, two weeks later, I was offered my internship here. So God definitely had a plan, and things evened out. Um, let's see. Yeah, trusting in God and leaning on his understanding and not mine has led me to such a better place than I would have been if I had done what I wanted to do. And the third point is to, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledging someone is like when you walk into church this morning and you see a group of people, you usually wave and say hi to them. Like if they're your friends, you're going to say hi. You might give them a hug. If they're people you don't really like, you're going to pretend that something's on your shoe and just kind of walk away, right? The amount of acknowledgement that you have (laughs) is tied to your relationship and respect with them. The same thing goes with God. The amount that we acknowledge him in our life is directly tied to our relationship with him. How much you know him and spending time with him and then how much you respect him. Because you can know God says not to do this. God doesn't want me to do this and then still do it. And I'm not talking about things that happen, but when you consciously choose, like God doesn't want me to do this, but I'm going to do this anyway, you are still acknowledging God. You're just pushing him to the side. It's not positive. Um, Yeah, so... Do your habits reflect that? When you do things, does it acknowledge God positively? Um, I talk about giving a lot because we're young, and that's something that we're really working on and learning is how to trust God like that. Um, But in all your ways, acknowledge him. You know, what music are you listening to? What TV are you watching? How long are you scrolling on your phone instead of being with your family? How much time are you doing the math on Facebook? It doesn't add up because your time is valuable. The things that you have are valuable, and you can acknowledge God with that. Um, I'm not someone who does really well at reading my Bible early in the mornings. I know for some people that's great. Um, Sleep is a weird thing for me, so sometimes that doesn't always happen. But that doesn't have to look the same for everyone. Acknowledging God with your time can be like me later once I'm actually awake, sitting down, and instead of working on all the things that I need to work on that are good, just taking a few minutes and be like, okay, I'm going to spend time with Jesus right now. That's giving him my best. That's for me acknowledging him with my time. You can acknowledge God in your friendships. Um, I don't think you have to be friends with Christians only, but I think when you're friends with other people, you need to make sure that you're not changing. You're still acknowledging God, positively or negatively, in your interactions with those people. Um, Yeah, when I started really, like, trying to follow God, I had to stop watching, like, all my favorite TV shows. That was really sad, Um, and I still miss it. People don't tell you that sin is good, but sometimes sin feels good, and you miss it, and that's okay, but you have to know that God is better, and it is worth giving that up. It is worth following him, because he will make your path straight, and that's the fourth point-ish, because we don't really do anything about that, We do the other three, and we trust that God will handle the rest. Um, And all of this reminds me of this story of this, okay, it's a Korean hip-hop dance studio in Koreatown in California, and it's run by these two sisters. um, They've always been dancers, like, since they were little. They just wanted to dance. So they did that, and the way the dance community works is that while you're young, you dance, you choreograph, you teach, you do all of that, and then as you get older, you open your own studio because there's not much longevity in just dancing alone. You need something else. You need retirement, things like that. Um, So these sisters, they thought, you know, we're young. We're just going to dance, and then we'll figure out the studio later. (coughs) Sorry. Um, But around, what, 2017, 2019, in between there, they felt like God wanted them to open a studio. And they're like, that's super weird, because that is completely backwards of our plans. But they prayed about it, and doors started opening, so they knew. They're like, all right, This is what God wants us to do. So they still danced, they still choreographed, but they also opened a studio. They named it like Urban Dance something, something generic. Um, And then in 2020, all the studios started shutting down. Before the COVID pandemic had hit, they had already started praying, God, I feel like this isn't exactly what you wanted us to do. Like, we know you wanted us to open a studio, but 
this, something feels wrong. Like, I feel like there's more that needs to happen. So they had already started praying and seeking God about it. When the pandemic happened, their neighbor, so they had like their space and then their neighbor had a space and it was a different store, but there was a wall that connected them and there was a door that connected the rooms. And their neighbor was not able to pay rent anymore and they gave up the lot. But these girls also were barely able to pay rent and they were about to have to give up their space. When the landlord called them and was like, look, this space is open. I know you guys had initially wanted it. It's available now. Do you guys want to take it? I know you could expand your studio. And they were like, whoa. They never thought that other lady was going to leave, um, but they did. And they had the space, but they had no money. They were barely making ends meet. And they prayed about it. The landlord gave it to them. He just said, I feel like I'm supposed to give this to you. He gave it to them at a discounted price. They were able to move into that space. Their class went from 15 people to 30 people because they had that extra room. And because of that, because all the other dance studios shut down, they were able to start having more students and being able to pay for things. And what was really cool is that the first night of the whole new studio space, first, while they were renovating, they took those months to really pray over it. They did a whole rebrand. Their name is Roots now because they want people to have roots and be grounded. They dedicated the space with a huge worship night where they dedicated it to the Lord. And they were like, you gave this to us. We're giving this back to you. Whatever you have for us, we want to let this place honor you. So fast forward a couple years again, they felt like they were supposed to expand, but there was no real estate, there is no room, everything is so expensive. This was this year, everything is so expensive. Um, and their mother actually was driving and she drove past this building that they had always been like, this would be a perfect studio. And there was a for sale sign or for lease sign up. So the mom, before even talking to them, she called the landlord and got them a meeting. And the daughters went and they had a meeting with this landlord and they loved it and it was amazing. And the price was way too high for them. There was no way they could afford it. And they told him that. They were like, look, this is great. We can't do this right now. A couple of days later, they get a phone call. And the guy was like, I don't know why, but I feel like I'm supposed to give this to you. Like you are supposed to be in this space. And it's the same words that happened last time they had a new space, but they were like, we can't afford this. And so again, the, the landlord lowered the price. He took their highest offer, but he took what they were willing to pay. They opened it up. Now the classes can hold almost 60, 70 people. And those are people that are hearing about Jesus while they're going to dance places. They're in a safe area. They're building community. And these girls acknowledge God in all their ways. They didn't compromise their values. The dance community is super dark. And they're bringing light. They're bringing Jesus to these kids and to all these people. They trusted in God with all their heart. They didn't lean on their own understanding. It made no sense to say yes to that first initial um, expansion, but they did. They acknowledged him in all their ways. They didn't compromise or conform based on what everyone was doing. They knew what they were supposed to do because God made them for this. And God made their steps clear. So... The question was, how do we make decisions that align with God's will? We talked about renewing our minds and not conforming. We talked about learning who God is, what he thinks, and asking him to shape and influence our thought processes. And we covered practical steps to do that. So now we have all the tools to make a decision that does align with God's will. Um, but you still have to do something after that. I want you to think like you're walking in the woods and there's no path but you have a light and all of a sudden the path starts to form, what do you do next? You walk. You have to go forward. You have to do something. God doesn't call us to a life of being comfortable. He also doesn't call us to a life of fear. He doesn't want us to be paralyzed by the weight of decisions or opportunities. He doesn't want you to sit there being like, I don't know what to do, so I'm going to do nothing. And sometimes that's the answer, but most of the time it's not. Think about how many dreams that people have from God that the enemy steps on because we don't do anything with them. Think about how many opportunities we lose because we're so afraid to even try. God can lay the path out for you. You can have the light in your hand. You can have shoes on your feet. But if you're not going to walk, there's really no point in even trying. You have to go forward. You have to try. The enemy wins when we sit on our hands. Um, and part of trusting God, too, is trusting that he will redirect your steps. If you start going this way and he is not wanting you to go there, he will move you because he is good and he is worthy of our trust. Maybe um, 
you know, lost job opportunities or a breakup or different friendships changing. Maybe that's not all just rejection, but maybe that's God redirecting you. Redirection isn't always, like, pain-free. It hurts sometimes. But, like, you prune trees so that they grow fruit. You redirect people, even if it hurts, because God knows that he has a plan for you, and he's going to keep you to that. If you're willing, he's going to keep you. So, um, Miss Nora said something in prayer today, and it was on my notes, so that was super cool. Um, She said there was a song that talks about trusting and obeying God. And what I wrote today is that it's God's job to handle the outcome. All he asks of us is to just trust him and obey him. So, there are two things that I want to pray for today. Um, If you do not have a relationship with God, you do not know him like that, I want to pray for that. And if you have a relationship with God or have had, but you're feeling like this, you don't know what to do, you don't feel like he's been with you, you don't spend time with him, you don't really know God, and you want to know God, um, we're going to pray for that. And then the second thing we're going to pray for is dedicating our year to him. But um, for the first prayer, if you are already saved, I would like you to pray with me so that way people don't feel uncomfortable. So with every head bowed and eyed closed, Um, Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I give you my heart. I believe that you died and rose again so that I can live in freedom from sin and have a relationship with you. I've tried doing things on my own and it just does not work. So I trust you now. Help me to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. And for the second thing, as we go into 2024, as you start making big decisions, if you'd like to dedicate your year to God, dedicate your next steps to him, um, I'd like you to stand up in your seat, and we're going to pray something together. So if you want to give your next year to God, please stand up. And repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord, thank you for waking me up today. As we near 2024, I give it to you. Let this year being off let this year be an offering to you. And let this year be a testimony of your goodness. Teach my eyes to see the way that you do. And let my ears hear your voice. Let the works of my hands honor you. And the words of my mouth praise you. Lead me in your righteousness and make your way straight in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I think Scott Holloway is coming up to close us out. Thank you guys very much. Y'all can be seated. job what amazing can you hear me (laughs) what amazing word Um, perfect timing for it and everything and you know I know it's so true I'm glad God's got a plan for my life because every day I go into work with a plan of I'm gonna do one two three four five things and 5 36 o'clock when I'm leaving I look I said well I'm still number one I didn't even make it to number two so uh, you know we got to trust God and, and believe and now I know why Linnea's always tying her shoes. I just thought I needed to buy her some Velcro shoes. But I know why she's always tying her shoes when I look at her. No. <laughs> but no, great word, great job. Um, appreciate that today. Uh, visitors, if you're a new or returning guest, uh, please fill out the connection card uh, in the chair, either in front or behind you, and give it to the gentleman back in the back for a gift. And uh, uh, thankfully that you're here today offering um as she was saying god you know loves uh cheerful uh givers and uh you know god does love you know a cheerful giver and i guarantee and and uh i challenge you that you cannot outgive god as we go into uh, 2024 if you want uh, all the blessings that god gives to you try out giving them i guarantee you can't um wednesday night 
We will start back with Bible Engagement Project for the adults and the youth, or adults and the kids, and the youth will be starting a new series as well. So, and then Thursday morning at 10 a.m., uh, the senior Bible study begins downstairs. Um, with the different ways to give, I forgot that part. You can mail a check, uh, 64 Holder Road, give uh, in the box in the back, or we've got the app, you know, or you can uh, do it through uh, your bank and send uh, a check that way. So thanks for being here. Thanks again for the message. It was really uh, right on spot, and let's pray. Father God, we love you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We just thank you for the message, Lord. Lord, just help us to always seek you, Lord, to have that closer walk with you. Lord, we know you've got a plan for each and every one of us. Help us just to get our eyes to see what that plan is, Lord, and just to trust you and have the faith in you that you will guide us in that direction, Lord. If we get off track, that you will get us back on track, Father. Just be with us this week, Lord. Give us a great and a happy and a blessed new year, Lord, as we enter 2024. Father, as we make new goals, that it would all be centered around you, Lord. And that should be our number one goal is, is to be closer to you, Lord, day in and day out than we were yesterday, Father. We just thank you for it. We praise you for it, for everything in your name. Amen.